According to the first chapter of the book of John, it says, We have found the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who will bring us truth and grace. Good morning and welcome to worship. Uh, if you are at home with us, we are happy to have you. But on Friday, uh, Governor Pritzker announced that Bloomington has moved from Tier 3 to Tier 2 mitigation, which means that we have uh, begun to, to welcome people back to worship uh, in a limited way. Um, so if you would like to come and worship with us, you are welcome to do it. Wash your hands, put your mask on, and come on down. Uh, sit separated, uh, but uh, we are happy. For those of you who are with us today, um, it is wonderful. At least I'll have someone to hopefully laugh at my sermon jokes. Um, but uh, it's also uh, a time that uh, we can, again, be together, uh, yet separated uh, as we worship this day. Uh, hear these words of our call to worship the one who calls you together this day yearns for each of you and for all people to hear and be blessed. Blessed is the one who comes bringing trustworthy words for the healing of the world. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Let's pray. You invite us, O oh God, to live in your ways and to give us to each other, to know and to love as we journey in this life. Show us your will for all creation. Help us to listen to your urgings and prayerful hearts so that we may honor what you have made. In the name of the Holy Trinity, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us worship as we sing our opening hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. seated. I get to say that again. It's so nice to have people in front of me. <clears throat> Here are words of our call to confession. Assured that the one who calls us to hear and obey already knows the confession our hearts 
and is all ready to forgive. Let us confess our sin before God and before one another this day. You can join me in our prayer confession up there or on the, uh, the link on our website. It says this, Holy God, you see each into us and know us fully as creatures in need of your constant care. We confess that we have neither heard your word nor followed your will. We have failed our nations, neighbors, family, friends, and ourselves. Give us ears to hear your wisdom. Lead us into honesty and faith so that we may begin again with renewed strength. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to take a moment of your own personal uh, reflections this morning. God knows the hearts of those who seek forgiveness. And by grace, you have been saved. In Christ's name, you are forgiven. Your sins are no more. You have made, been made clean. God strengthens you with freedom through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ, amen. Please be seated, and um, could John, could you give me a glass of water? Thank you. Someday we're going to have ushers back, and we'll all remember these things. I know Reginald is here. Um, I also have to realize that this is really bothering me. I know you can't see the cross, so here you go. <laughs> Obsessive compulsive. Oh, he's got music. I'm always a little worried when he's got music. Oh, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Oh, won't you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? I like that one. <laughs> Good morning, Pastor Andy. Good morning, every... There's people here. I know. Isn't it great? It is. Wave. Hey, look. They're waving back. Yeah. I, well, I was just remembering that song this week. Yeah, that's the Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. That's the Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Yeah, his wife, Joanne, she passed away this week. Oh, I heard that. That's very sad. We should pray oh, for them. Oh, but they had such a good life together. And did you know Mr. Rogers, he, he, he was also, he had friends who were puppets. He did have friends who were puppets. You know what else he was? He was a Presbyterian minister. Man, he has a lot in common with us, doesn't he? He does. Yeah. And he had great lessons for the kids all the time about how to be good neighbors and how to be just good citizens as well. Yeah, I was thinking about that this week, how to be a good neighbor. Oh, Pastor Andy, I don't know if I can be a good neighbor because I'm so small. What do you mean? You're a good neighbor. You, you know, make people smile and you tell jokes and even you smile. Well... <laughs> An interesting smile, right? Yeah, I just opened my mouth. Right, you can't turn your cheeks very much, but okay. But you know, you do make people happy. You do, you can do things. But I can't drive people anywhere. No, nope, you can't. No, thank and, goodness. And and I really, I I can't really get things off the top shelf for people because I'm pretty short. No, we had a lot of branches fall down a few weeks ago. You, I don't think I want to see you with a chainsaw. Yeah, yeah, and my my right arm doesn't work so well. Right, right. So there's a lot of I know there's a lot of things you can't do. But I'm guessing there are a lot of things that you can do. Even if you're small or, um, you know, can't reach tall shelves or run around, 
you want to guess what some of those wonderful things are? Well, what are they, Pastor Randy, well, if I'm... I don't know yet? <laughs> Good question. You're so insightful. So, um, th with COVID, a lot of people are home alone, and it's, they don't get to see people. You know what you could do? You could write them a care card. Well, if I'm left-handed, of course. Right, correct. Or it, maybe I could just call them. You could call them or send a Snapchat or uh, email or whatever you want. You could also do small jobs. Like what? Well, instead of picking up big sticks, you could pick up little sticks. Okay. Right? Well, maybe I could do that. Something else. Um, you could, um, instead of, you, you could perhaps just make someone something to eat. I could do that. Like cookies or something. Well, you know what, Pastor or, Randy? Bring them ice cream. Oh, I love ice cream. I know you do. But, Pastor Randy, I also feel called to pray for people. Oh, yeah, there's that. You could pray for them, too. There's lots of little things that you can do that make a really big difference. Have you ever thought that maybe God calls you to do things? Yeah. Even oh, when you're small? Even when you're small. This is a good lesson because I'm going to talk about um, Samuel today. And I'm going to talk about... Sam who? Samuel. He was a prophet in the Old Testament. And when they called, when God called him, he was like 10. What? Yeah. He was a little guy? He was a little guy. Wow. And he was a prophet. Someone who speaks for God? Right. Yep. That's... That's when he started hearing God's word. When he was like 10. So it doesn't matter how small we are. Nope. If God is calling us to, to God's kingdom, we should, we should listen. We should listen. And that the Bible says, if you hear God's words, it makes your ears tingle. <laughs> or stick out like mine. Right. Exactly. Or ears like that can help hear God better. You know what? What? I think that this world would be a better place if we just listened to God a bit more. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just try to help each other. And be a good than, neighbor. Right. Be a good neighbor. Absolutely. So... I think you're going to pray today as your first example of doing something small. Okay, I'm ready. All right, go ahead. Let's pray. God. God. Jesus. Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Be with us. Be with us. As we go through our days. As we go through our days. And we try to find out. And we try to find out. What you want us to do. What you want us to do. How to be a good neighbor. How to be a good neighbor. How to show care. How to show care. How to show love. How to show love. And how to eat cookies. And how to eat cookies. So that was my part. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Bye, everybody. See you later, man. I like the theme music. I do, too. All right. Be a good neighbor, Pastor Randy, and be a blessing. You be a blessing. Woo! <laughs> See, it's one of those simple things. <clears throat> Let us pray, or pray with me as I our, our pray our prayer of illumination. By your Holy Spirit, O oh God, open our ears and our eyes and our hearts and our minds to the Holy Word, so that it comes to rule within us for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Our, um, uh, our first lesson is a psalm reading this morning. It is Psalm 139. It is actually one of my favorite psalms. Um, and uh, I had an aunt pass away this past week, my Aunt June. She was my uh, father's sister-in-law. Um, and this was actually read at her Zoom funeral last night or yesterday. And uh, which I think it's a bit ironic that uh, God pulls everything together we just have to, we have to listen. We have to be observant. But Psalm 139 says this. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down. And are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, 
you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle on the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me becomes night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was with you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my <clears throat> unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me when none of them had not yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. here in the congregation, they do things like that, too. This is a way to say thank you. 
Um, our Old Testament lesson, our additional Old Testament lesson, since we just read from the Psalms, is from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1 through 20. And this is the call of Samuel. You can follow along up here, or if at home you can follow along in your, your own Bible. And it says this. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had become, begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel, Samuel. And he said, here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. And the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again, a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house, for beginning, from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever, for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice, or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also. If you hide anything from me, <clears throat> all of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all of Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being with us this day, for, for bringing us back through the doors to, to again worship together, uh, not only uh, virtually, but, but together. Let us hear the words that you have taught, which you have proclaimed, which you have written, so that we can, we can carry them into a world that we know needs to hear them. Amen. So I would say that this is a rather well-known passage in Scripture. It's part of the lectionary reading, so there's a chance that it gets read in worship at least once every three years. Um, question, how many of you have heard this story before? Okay, good number of you. All right. Um, how many of you have an understanding of, of how we have arrived at the call of Samuel and then perhaps what happens afterwards? You can raise your hand for that. Not as many, right? We only, only a few of them. 
So I'm going to give you a little backstory here of how we got to the call of Samuel. Samuel is the um, eventual son of Hannah and Helkanah. And, and what we know is that Hannah was unable to conceive children, so in her great distress and shame at that point in history of not having children, she goes to the temple, um, the temple in Shiloh, it's not in Jerusalem yet, and she prays um, to God for help. In Hannah's prayer, she vows, though, that if God would remember her and bring her a son, that she would dedicate her son to the temple, thus giving him to the Lord. And, and God does hear her prayer, and he gives her a son, and the birth of Samuel takes place. And after three years, and what Scripture tells, after his weaning, she takes him to the temple, and she dedicates him to the temple. In other words, she actually gives her three-year-old son to the temple. Okay? It's here where Eli takes him under his wing and begins to teach him the ways of being a priest. So our reading for today has Samuel is young. He's maybe, I don't know, 8, 10, maybe 12. I mean, he, it, it, really at this point in his life, he's not a priest. He's actually, I don't know, no more than I would say a, a temple gopher. He did the beckoning of, of Eli. It even says in our scripture reading today that when he woke up, he's the one who opens the curtains. He opened the doors to the temple so people could see. Now, there's also a backstory. A backstory to the call of Samuel is that Eli had two sons. Their names were Hophni and Phinehas, um, who Eli had been trying also to train to fulfill the role of the high priest of the temple. He was training his sons to, to replace him when, when he died. And you can tell from our reading that he, he can't see very well anymore, and, but you know, he, he's, he's kind of starting to phase out a little bit. Now, the problem is, is that Eli's sons are what Scripture calls wicked. They despise the task that it requires them. They don't want to be priests. They rebel against it. They do things like eat food from the altar. You know, when people come to make sacrifices, they, you know, it smells good. They take the meat. They eat it. Um, they, they steal from the offerings. They have relations with prostitutes. They're, they're just not good priests. The issue with Eli um, in no longer hearing God is because God has instructed Eli to straighten out his sons. Your sons are doing some pretty bad things. You need to straighten them out. But Eli never does this. And the curse of God upon Eli and his family, as told in our reading from Samuel, they, does occur. It occurs in a fashion, if you continue reading on 1 Samuel chapter 4, I encourage you to read that. Right? Read, read 2, and you'll, you'll hear about Hannah and how Eli, or how Samuel's born. And then read in chapter 4, because this is when all the crazy stuff happens to Eli's sons. So we now find ourselves in the midst of today's reading, and not surprisingly, the word of Yahweh was, was precious in those days and was not frequently heard. That's what our scripture says. And because God, though, has a covenant with his people, he does, he does something wonderful. The grace of God comes out, and he doesn't abandon them. So one evening, as Samuel lay down asleep, he hears a voice calling. Samuel gets up. He runs over to Eli and says, okay, here I am. You called me. And Eli says, I didn't call you. Go lay down again. So Samuel lays down. And I like to say, in much of the pattern of jokes we've heard our entire lives, um, the scene repeats itself. Samuel hears a voice calling Samuel. He goes, Eli, Eli again tells him to, to go. He didn't call him to lay down. Eventually, Eli realizes it's God who's speaking and not. Um, it, it, he tells, basically tells Samuel what's taking place. It's God talking to you. You need to go and listen to what he says. The next time Samuel hears the voice, he tells him, say, speak, Yahweh, for your servant hears you. It's here where Samuel opens himself up to hearing God's call. It's his epiphany. It's his moment of conversion. It's his fall on the knees before God point. Because the scripture says that Samuel didn't really know God yet, but this is it. This is his, this is his altar call, so to speak. All right. 
And it says this, Samuel, after that, Samuel grew, and Yahweh was with him, and God let none of his words fall to the ground. None of Samuel's words fall to the ground. He, he, he gave them power. He gave them spirit. So Samuel then grows up, after our story, to become an extraordinary person, ex with extraordinary power, with great wisdom. Because why? Well, because God was with him. Samuel does some great things. Samuel not only anoints the first king, King Saul, for the Israelites, he also anoints David, who's known as the, the most famous, the greatest king of Israel. And, and this is the, the kind of fun story I, I think that we like to hear. A faithful woman, she has a problem. She goes to the temple, she prays to God. God hears her prayers. God blesses her. But, he, she also, but God also blesses her son. I mean, I like this story because it speaks to the potential of what lies within each of us when we put God first in our lives. And I think, well, I think we can learn a few things. A few things from Samuel's call and also from Samuel's work. All right. So here you go if you're taking notes. The first thing our story suggests is that, that we can awaken great potential not only in ourselves, but also in our children when we teach them to put God first in their lives. Our children, the youngest age, like Samuel. So I don't know if you're, if you're a history buff, you may know this name, General Mark Clark. Okay? General Mark Clark was one of the greatest heroes in World War II. He led the Salerno invasion at which um, Winston Churchill said it was the most daring amphibious operation we have ever launched or which I think has ever been launched on a similar scale in war. It was when they went into Italy. At that point in history, Clark had been promoted to lieutenant general. He was the youngest general in the army at the time. And it if you look at his, his history, he was a graduate of West Point. Everyone's like, oh, he must have been a really, you know, really inspirational, really powerful man. Although he was not at the top of his class. He was actually 111th in a class of 139. He was on the, what they call the backside of the bell curve. Samuel, in his hard work and obedience to the priest Eli, has found favor with God at a young age. Like 10. He first hears God's call then. He eventually becomes a prophet, one that anoints Saul and David. He is the blessed son of a barren woman who, who is, well, who simply had great faith in a difficult life. Samuel teaches us to work hard and to put our faith in God. And when we do this, certainly we will be awakened to, to great potential of what's to come. All right, that's the first lesson. The second um, lesson our story suggests is that God rewards faithfulness with blessing and that gives us, well, I think that gives us a great cause for hope. Um, another story for you. Um, there's a, a theologian and professor of, of pastors by the name of Fred Craddock. He, he's since passed away. I heard him before he passed away some years ago when I lived in Oklahoma. Great lecturer, great preacher of pre or, uh, teacher of preachers, and and what this particular day he was giving a lecture on the practical implications of consecration. That's what the lecture was called. In other words, this lecture was to push pastors to give of their whole lives to Christ, right? Their consecration. What does that all mean? Um, Craddock professed this act appears glorious, appears noble, and that the faithful wish to see their clergy in this such a way. To, people of faith want to see their leaders com give themselves completely to God in their ministries. He then went on to say, to pour oneself out to others is to pay the ultimate price of martyrdom. He said, yet, Craddock was always a yet guy, yet we think, um, we think that giving all ourselves to the Lord is like taking a thousand dollar bill and laying it on the table and saying, here's my life, Lord, take it away. But in reality, in reality, most of us, or for most of us, is that that's not what happens. 
For most of us, we are, we are sent to the bank with that $1,000 bill to where we, are, we change it in for quarters. So that as we go through life, as we go through a life of ministry, we spend our life putting out quarters or 50 cents, listening to things like the, the, the troubled, uh, the, the neighbor kids' troubled stories instead of sending them off. Going to committee meetings on nights where you'd rather be at home sitting on the couch. Giving a cup of water to an older gentleman in a retirement home. Those are the lessons. Giving our life to Christ often isn't glorious. It's done in all those little acts, though. Those little acts, 25 cents at a time. I mean, it would be easy to go out in a flash of glory, right? Here it is. It's harder to live the Christian life little by little over a long haul. See, we can see that Samuel has faith in God when he eventually listens to his call, but it's not, it's really not realized until, until we continue to read on in his journey. This is just the beginning of his call. We're in the f- book of 1 Samuel. Did you know that there's 2 Samuel too? Third long Old Testament book. Samuel has a lot of stuff. Samuel takes no time to listen to God's word that are spoken to him, and then he follows the path. As we each act in our faithfulness to God, how often do we see and live in the blessings that we do receive? They're out there. They are out there. We just need to be attentive to their reality. We need to to let our ears tingle when we hear the word of God. Okay, the third thing that uh, I think the call of Samuel teaches us is that it suggests that God will lead us through today's darkness and into tomorrow's light if we only serve. Now, I was thinking about it this week. There, there has been some obviously, well, there obviously is a lot of talk about, I don't know, the events that have taken place this past year. Right? It's not hard to talk about. I think we talk lots about the weather now. Um, in casual conversation than, than we do about things that happen now and in 2020. I mean, there's the COVID pandemic, there's George Floyd, there's autonomous zones, there's riots, there's looting, there's contested elections and rocky transitions to new administrations, right? All things we like to talk about or are forced to talk about. If we were just to watch the news on a regular basis, to fixate upon it perhaps, What's being reported, I would imagine, I would imagine that we would find ourselves pretty anxious and very troubled. Perhaps the darkness we believe to be within would blind us from today, from today's and tomorrow's, well, tomorrow's light. Here's what I mean. I've heard recently that the United States of America is a divided nation. I disagree. I disagree that we are a divided nation. I would say that we are a united nation with a divided government. And here's what I mean by that. When the Congress is called into session, what we witness is fighting, manipulation, backstabbing, pocket lining. Yet when a bunch of Americans gather together at say, I don't know, in a sporting arena or in a concert hall, or at a high school graduation. You know what? We do it really well together. Together we cheer for our favorite team. We experience the talent and the gifts that God has given others. We congratulate a friend or a family member for for work well done. When everyday Americans come together, we actually look for commonality rather than a reason to judge, to accuse, or to hate. And I know this is true because because I serve a congregation, St. Luke Union Church, that is not made up of a membership that is all of the same political party. But we are all a part of the Holy Family of God. All proclaiming Jesus our Savior. All being led by the Holy Spirit to serve and to protect one another with the love of God. In other words, We have a common mission. We all hold the same banner. We are all children of God. 
Samuel has been called by God to be the next prophet of Israel. It's a dark time. It's a dark time for this nation. Those who have been looked to and placed in a position to lead their people in their faith journey are unfortunately the ones who are exploiting the people in the temple of God. Scripture tells us that God has been silent. God has not spoken to his priests for a long time. But now Samuel, now Samuel has been called to speak the truth of God's word. Not an easy task. I mean, he didn't want to tell Eli what he heard. God told me that things are going to be bad for you. But the words are God's truth. God's way and God's light to people to bring them out of darkness. 1 Samuel 3.3 says about Eli, and it also says a lot about um, everyone else. It says, the lamp of God had not yet gone out. Out of the darkness shall come a great light. So three things. Three things that the call of Samuel should teach us and, and I hope for you to take away today. First is God shows the potential that lies within each of us. God rewards the faithful with blessings. And God will lead us through today's darkness and into tomorrow's light. Thanks be to God. Amen? Amen. This is the point where we, well, we used to pass plates, but uh, there is a basket if you are here for today's offering. Um, if you are at home, um, thank you. Thank you for your continued support of the ministry and the mission of St. Luke Union Church. Um, as council met last week, I, I'm, I'm inspired by the things that we hope to accomplish here 
in 2021 as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, as we come together in, in prayer today, continue to pray for, uh, for those on our prayer chain, if you get that email. Also, um, hold Juan Galvan in your prayers. He is our custodian who, um, I know he is recovering from COVID, but uh, he, he told me last week that he is still a bit tired, um, and hopefully he will be back uh, doing all the wonderful things he does here for this church building. So let's pray today. Heavenly Father, glorious Son, ever-present and sustaining Spirit, you are three, but you are one. We are many, but we are one in your love, in your grace, your blessing, and your mercy. Lord, help us to, uh, to look to one another, not with suspicious eyes or condemnation or cynicism or judgment, but help us to look to one another as, as each being a child, your child, loved and cared for and with the same grace that reigns upon us. We are, are so thankful that uh, we do have a place that uh, we have again opened the doors to, uh, to worship. Worship that will be done safely and, and wisely, but uh, it will give us an opportunity to be together, to, to lift our hearts to you, to, um, to allow us um, to simply uh, best hear your words. Let them tickle our ears um, when we hear them. We thank you for uh, households that uh, keep the cold out. We thank you for um, ability to share simple things. Even if they are small, they mean a great deal to those who receive. Um, even Reginald, who, uh, who makes us smile, is capable of, of caring and sharing your love. Lord, be with, uh, with those who are sick. Be with those who are continued to be exposed by COVID. Help them to, to remain safe. Help them to remain healthy. Be with those who, who grieve um, being alone, though. Those who perhaps have lost someone. Be with us and let us know that you surround us, that you carry us forward, that, as the psalm says, you bind us in both front and behind. Just continue to watch over us these days. Help us to... Uh, uh, to continue to distribute and to inoculate, to overcome. And as we move this week, Lord, bring about peace in our nation. Bring about civility. Bring about um, a commonality that will bring us together and not separate us. One that will, will give us a common mission for all your people. Let uh, what takes place in the inauguration of a new administration, that that administration hears all people and does the best to serve all of those people. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your blessing. Help us to learn from the words in scripture. Help us to carry them forth into the world wherever we meet, and whatever we do. Hear our prayer, especially this morning, the one that your son taught us when we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. There are um, several announcements that I need to share with you all today. 
um, the first one is that next Sunday, following worship, we will be holding our annual congregational meeting. You may have gotten your annual report. It is in the mail. Um, expect it. Um, so we have questions uh, with regards to that. Um, next week's annual meeting is going to be a hybrid meeting. It's going to be in person if you choose to be here. It's also going to be via Zoom. Um, so if you want that link, we are going to set that meeting up this week. We'll email it out to everyone as well. So you can Zoom participate or you can come here and participate for that annual congregational meeting. Um, there is a note as well every year, and I, and I try to just share it with you. We have this thing in, um, in the church. It's called per capita. It's primarily a Presbyterian thing, but we carry it over to the United Church of Christ. And some people call it the church tax, <laughs> but it's really not. It's, uh, it's money that we designate to our denominations um, and a, as a per person basis. Um, and that amount is $35.25. And we pay it for everybody. Some people share that money so it can just pass through to the denominations as well. If you are willing and able to share in the per capita this year, it would be greatly appreciated. Um, next Sunday is also not only Congregational Sunday, it is Script Sunday. So if you need script cards, um, the proceeds help us um, on our, our youth mission trip, which we are going this year. We're going to Michigan to, uh, to serve the, the local community doing home repair as well. Um, tomorrow is Martin Luther King Day. The office will be closed, um, so no one will be here. I still am holding our, um, our Monday Bible study class. It'll be a little different venue. I'm actually going to do it from my mom and dad's house. I need to go help my mom do some things. So um, that will still take place tomorrow as well. Um, two more things. At 1230 today, we are going to have snack Zoom. Right, Emma? Snack Zoom today. Savannah? Snack Zoom. Um, so please, uh, Doug has uh, something to reflect upon, and I'm sure there's going to be a game of some sort. So please come to that as well. Um, you'll be happy to know. We're trying to figure out how we can get together, maybe outside, as I see it snowing, maybe some sort of sledding activity or snow activity needs to take place as well. And then the final thing, it's, this is completely personal, I have really happy chickens right now. <laughs> so if anyone is interested in eggs, I got them. So uh, are there other announcements that need to be shared today? No. All right, I figured I'd get one hand raised from, no. St we still have poinsettias. If you want poinsettias, grab one before you leave. All right, let us stand and sing our closing hymn, Here I Am, Lord.
So Samuel's call teaches us a few things, but it's not just his call, it's the, it's the story in the beginning, it's the backstory about Eli and his family. But the three things that, that we can learn is that God shows the potential that lies within us. God rewards faithfulness with blessings, and God will lead us through today's darkness into, into great light. So, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may you be blessed, may you be kept, not only today or tomorrow, but forevermore. Amen. Amen.